Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Pray First, the conversation we have Monday through Friday right here on Facebook Live, and we're so glad to have you. This is also an interactive conversation, and what that means is I want you to network with one another, get to know one another, meet new friends from literally all over the world. I want to give a shout out to, where I want to give a shout out to today, how about Albuquerque, New Mexico, a shout out to our friends in Albuquerque who are listening to Pray First. It's so good to have you as a part of our place here. Also, hashtag live, hashtag recorded, hashtag shared. Get this out on your page. Uh, It's very important that you do that based on Facebook analytics so that we can get it on people's pages. You guys are rocking the shares right now, and that is being reflected in our Facebook reach. In the past three days, we've reached over 11,000 people. It's probably more than that now. I haven't checked it this morning. I'm going to guess that it's probably closer to 15,000 people, and that's because of you guys. And what's even more impressive than the reach is the people who are actually participating and touching things and writing things and hitting things. Uh, it's it's uh, called Interactions. We're way up on those. So good morning, everybody. We're going to start a brand new series today. Everybody hashtag brand new. This is a brand new series, and we're going to rock the world of Christianity today and ask, is what we're seeing in our churches, is what we're seeing in our faith, is what we're seeing, you know, fast food boxed up, prettily organized, and, you know, given to the masses on Sunday morning, is that Christianity? Maybe. But is it the teachings of Jesus? Now, you've noticed that since 2020 began, I am very much focusing in on the teachings of Jesus Christ. We want to ask the question. Someone's got to slow our roll down. And someone in this generation has got to ask the questions. Is where we've come, is this this following Christ? Is this Christianity? What about this book we call the Bible? See, here's the issue. Most people in America who are teaching the Bible are teaching the Bible to little kids, and little kids are getting, you know, the Bible. You know, Christian, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth generation Christians. And the problem with the teachers are that they too receive the Bible as a little kid. Now, there's one thing that I've referred to as childlike faith, and that's what Jesus said we should have. But our faith should grow beyond our childhood faith. So we're going to be talking about that over some time. Because I'm telling you right now, listen very closely, most of what we consider Christianity is not the teachings of Jesus. And just because we change our pants from bell bottoms to tight skinny, and just because we traded in the organ for synthesizers, and just because we now, you know, have cool coffee shops and cafes in our churches, as does Crosspoint, listen to me. It doesn't mean we've improved, okay? It doesn't mean that we've changed. And here's the deal. Throughout generations, as churches and people of faith began to, you know, put makeup on a pig or, you know, lipstick on a cow or ketchup on a dog turd and call it a hot dog, people recognize it as fake. They recognize it as, oh, that stinks, It stinketh, and I want us to slow down in the church and go back to the teachings of Jesus because the teachings of Jesus will change the world. So the questions we're going to ask is, who needs God? Who needs God? Everybody write that out. Who needs God? Who needs religion? Come here, guys. It's not that atheism is growing as far as a religion is concerned. It's not that atheism is becoming more attractive as far as a religion is concerned, it's just that religion is becoming less attractive and each generation can smell the fake. Each generation can smell the poo. No, no matter what we do to try to, you know, oh, we're the new church. Why? Because you changed your pants? Ah, oh, we're the we're the hip-hop church. Why? Because you got smoke and lights. Everybody can buy them from Amazon now, okay? 
You can have smoke and lights in your bedroom. You can have smoke and lights in your bathroom. You can have smoke and lights and control it by Alexa for probably less than $100. So this has nothing to do with how cool you are or how cutting edge you are or how sleepy your church is. Because some of you, man, you just you are so attached to the organ. You would think that the organ was one of the 12 disciples and you have to slap some of your deacons and wake them up in church because, man, they're so sick and, and bored about your preacher's message. And some of you are sitting out there, most of you who are listening to me probably go to church. But if any one of you who don't go to church, let me tell you what. Uh, church is changing, and I don't mean just their pants. And the church is changing, and I just don't mean their, their style of worship. And the church... Look here, the church is going back to the teachings of Jesus Christ. So if there has ever been a time where you might want to come back and retest, and listen, don't just go to one church and say, oh, the church hasn't changed. You need to go find a church where the church has changed and become a part of it, or at least sit back and say, hey, I want to know more. So it's not that atheism is attracting people. It's not that atheism is, you know, pulling folks in. Scripture says in Matthew chapter 24, I believe it's verse 10, that in the last days there will be a falling away from the faith. Everybody say falling away from the faith. I want to give you that scripture so I can make sure you have it. It is. It's Matthew 24, verse 10. At this time, many will turn away from the faith. They will begin to betray and hate one another. Religion is just becoming less and less and less attractive. And buildings and steeples are becoming less and less attractive. And if you just heard me say that, you say, we don't have a building. We don't have a steeple. We meet in a shopping strip, so we're better. Bull. Beep. What? That's like changing your pants. You, 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 you can, you know, <laughs> you can vomit into a Campbell's chicken noodle soup can and it still vomit. And you say, why do you use that, Pastor? That sounds kind of gross because Jesus says this kind of crappy faith that we're kind of manufacturing and calling Christianity, he says he wishes it'd rather be hot or cold, but this middle ground stuff makes him want to vomit, makes him want to spit it out. And I think that a lot of uh, young people, a lot of older people are at that same place in their faith. We were told that religion had all the answers when we were growing up. Many of us believed, you know, that we were told that, that religion has all the answers, that faith has all the answers, that the church has all the answers, and just get in the Bible and it has all the answers. And what many of us are recognizing is, is that faith and religion didn't have all the answers. That's a lot of times faith and religion uh, were in fact part of the problem. Now, you see, the people I'm talking to right now are listening to a you know a professing follower of Jesus Christ, but the majority of people in society aren't listening to teachers like me. Okay, so why should we care, Pastor? Why should we care about those who are out there? They have an opportunity to hear pray first and go to the church and go to the this and do the that and 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 you know, but they're not hearing this. They're not listening to this. So you play a role. All of us play a role in this. Here's some of the people that the world are listening to. A couple of years back, a man by the name of Sam Harris uh, wrote a book. And took it to 12 different publishers, and 12 different publishers turned him down. And he wanted to write a letter to the Christian nation about how ignorant you are, and about how much problems you cause, and how, you know, scientifically unmotivated you are, and how mystically bent you are, and how deceived you are, and how church has you know, hurt this country, hurt our families, hurt our nations, caused us to become more, you know, politically motivated and less, you know, scientifically and all these things. So Sam Harris writes this book, Letter to a Christian Nation, and turned down by 12 publishers. Someone finally picks it up. It, the book of Sam Harris spends 33 weeks, 33 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list. Let me tell you what that means. More people were reading Sam Harris's book than Christians who claim to read the Bible every day. 33 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list is this book. And he writes this letter to a Christian nation. 
And then Richard Dawkins comes out and says, wow, this is being so well received. Let me tell you, anti-faith, anti-Christianity, anti-Christ uh, things leave, you know, it, it's just sucking people towards it. It's just magnetizing people towards it. And so people are reading it and people are doing it. So now other writers are popping up. And here pops up, you know, Richard Dawkins. And in his book, The God Delusion, he talks about how how uh, deranged we are and how you know uh, deceived we are. And he even says that the reason he wrote this book is that when by the time a person puts it down, they will be an atheist. Come on. He says, and I quote, If this book works as I intend, religious readers who open it will be atheists when they put it down. Three million copies of that book were sold in 35 languages. And let me explain to you why so many copies were sold and why there were so many languages. There was a great desire to get away from faith that makes me look stupid, to get away from faith that makes me look like a blind follower, to get away from a, come here, come here, come here, come here. Most of us and most of you, and it's not your fault, and it's not someone else's fault necessarily. Most of us have a hand-me-down faith. Our faith was handed down from our family. Our faith was handed down through the generations. Our faith was handed down. You have a hand-me-down faith, and we're going to talk about that because you need to discover your roots. Everybody in the room need to, needs to hashtag roots. Then, since, you know... Uh, Sam Harris and Richard Dawkins made such a splash, and here pops up Christopher Hitchens, and he writes the book, God is Not Great, and millions of copies are sold, and people are consuming it. Why? Not because people think, you know, let's see, that atheism is so grand, they're just sick and tired of Christianity, the way it's become. And so they're not militantly against faith, and they're not mili militantly against religion. They're just being rocked into this category known as nuns, not N-U-N, N-O-N-E-S, nuns, non-religiously affiliated. Now, here's something significant about this. This group has given a voice to a significant group in population called, say it with me, Nuns. This is significant. This is very significant. Let me give you some, some stats. Uh, the religiously non-affiliated are 23% now of the United States. Almost 25%. Almost one quarter of Americans say, I am religiously non-affiliated. Now that includes a whole lot of older people who fully embrace uh, religion and primarily in the United States, Christianity. But listen to this. 35% of those between the ages of 23 and 38 who are going to outlive most of those uh, more mature people who claim, you know, relationship with God, you know, religious experience, I'm a Christian. Uh, 23 to 38 year olds is 35% who are walking away from faith. Remember uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 10, Jesus said, There will be a falling away from the faith. You said, who who cares? They're just not listening to the truth. It just doesn't matter. Let me tell you who should care. Each and every one of us listening to this broadcast should care, and each and every one of us should hold our churches to a higher standard. That's who should care. Each and every one of us who love and follow Jesus, that's who should care. Each and every one of us who have a responsibility to go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, that's who ought to care. Those of us who love our Jesus is more than we love our editions of the Bible, that's who should care. Those of us who have been touched by the power of the Holy Spirit and seen the love of Jesus Christ, Christ manifested in our lives, that's who should care. Every man, woman, and child who claims anything to do with Jesus, that's who should care because Jesus cares. And we have a personal responsibility. Listen, it is not the millennials' fault. It is not the atheists' fault. It's not the agnostics' fault. It's not the fallen world's fault. It's not somebody else's fault. It's not late night TV's fault. And it's not fake news' fault that the world does not receive the love of Jesus Christ. It is my fault. It is my fault. 
Many of those things that I just mentioned do not have the power of the Holy Spirit. Many of those things that I just mentioned do not know Jesus Christ. Many of those things that I just mentioned don't have the power to change the world, nor do they have the responsibility to change the world, nor do they have the inclination to change the world. But you and I, you and I, from a phone, from a job, from a career, from a school, from an institution, from the place we've been placed in our family, have the opportunity, the responsibility, and the power to change the world. And we don't have to beat them with the Bible. We don't have to tell them they're going to hell. We don't even have to invite them to our churches. Woo! What do you mean, Pastor? We can do all these things without a brick building and mortar building. <coughs> Yes, we sure can. Jesus jumped out of a tent because he was sick of being pulled around. He tore down a temple because they kept putting him in a box. And then he gave us something called the ecclesia, where we'd be the body of Christ. And I'll be mm, that we didn't go and build a kerche. Build a building. Build a t another tent. Build another this. Look, God put the Holy Spirit in you. We're the church. So we're going to be challenging ourselves over the next couple of weeks to say, hey, this is gold and this is, this is poop. This is chicken noodle soup and this is vomit. This is truth. This is false. This is what a follower of Christ is. This is a Christian. What's that? We're going to be challenging ourselves over this time uh, to expose this. There is a reason that so many have migrated away from the church and so many people have migrated away from the faith and it's not the nun's fault. It's my fault for dropping the ball. But our generation is picking the ball back up and we're going to challenge this stuff known as Christianity. And in challenging this stuff known as Christianity, we're going to bring some people back who didn't have to leave in the first place because their reasons and excuses for leaving have nothing to do with the teachings of Jesus Christ. They have more to do with the Americanized, Westernized version of Christianity we call the kerche, the church. Ugh. People who are nothing like Jesus loved Jesus. And Jesus loved people who were nothing like him. And that is not, that is not the reputation of the church. The reputation of the church is, if you're not like me, I don't like you. And the reputation of the church is that the world sure don't like the church because the church don't like them beating the hell out of them. We don't believe, we don't believe. Whatever. So anyway, most people walk away from Christianity, and the reason they did had nothing to do with the teachings of Jesus. Most people embrace Christianity before they know what they're getting into. Come on. Most people embrace Christianity before they know what they're getting into. Most people believe if they go to church, they get baptized and read their Bible, they're a Christian. Just embracing some, just Most people embrace Christianity before they know what they're getting into. They, they don't even realize what, 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 what is supposed to happen in our lives. They don't even realize that those who love Jesus follow Jesus. They don't even realize. They're just kind of, it's kind of like the walking dead. It's kind of like mummified faith, not mummified. What's that other thing? Zombified faith, zombie faith. We're just going, and, 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 and dead men's walking, and dead men's talking, and dead churches, man. Come on. And, and, and look, when you move away from something, as people are moving away from Christianity and people are moving away from the faith, don't you just think about this, and then I'm going to be through for today. When you move away from one thing, you're moving towards something else. I want you to think about that statement. Anytime you move away from one thing, you're moving towards something else. Just think about it. If you walk away from something in the natural, you are moving towards something else. You cannot walk away from one thing and not go towards something else. You cannot move away from one thing and not go towards something else. Our nation and people, the churches, have moved away from the teachings of Jesus Christ, and we've moved towards something else. I want to say something real quick. Loving people is teaching us to Jesus. Got a verse for you real quick I want to read to you. Matthew 25, When the Son of Man comes in all His glory and all the angels with Him, verse 31, He will sit on His glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before Him. He will separate the people from one another and the shepherd, and as the shepherd separates the sheep and the goats. He will put the sheep on His right and the goats on the left. Then the king will say to those on His right, Come here, come you who are blessed by the Father. Take your inheritance the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. 
I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came and you visited me. The righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see a stranger invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick and in prison and come to visit you? And the king will reply, Jesus will reply, I tell you the truth, whoever did this unto the least of these brothers and sisters have done this unto me. That is the teachings of Jesus Christ. That is the church that will be separated from the goats who sing and bring in the sheaves but never been out in the field. So one of the things we do is our church also is a sponsor of a place that I'm the CEO of, and that's Destiny Center. Look at these mats. Do you recognize what this is made out of? This is a rolled up bed mat. It is super thick and very comfortable. And we get these and give these to homeless people because they are waterproof and they provide padding. You say, well, why does that matter? Uh, because we want to hear, enter into your rest, good and faithful servants. Do you know what these are made out of? You know what these are braided out of? These are braided out of Kroger and Walmart sacks. Can you, do you recognize them now? But it's a blanket. It's a mat that they can put on the ground to keep the frost from getting them, keep the water from getting to them, uh, to keep their, you know, their bed clothes and their, their things warm. This, this, this is what matters. Uh, being a good husband, being a good wife, we'll go through all these different things, but um, there are opportunities for you to make a difference. Now, I know we'd rather, you know, turn some more lights on and get our dreams a little bit tighter, but if we're going to reach the world, people who are nothing like Jesus like Jesus, and Jesus loved people who were nothing like him. These mats are incredible. Let me show you something real quick. I'm, I'm actually on Destiny Center. Let's see if I can... We've got, we've got stacks of them right now uh, that we will be distributing, and also... I mean, just tons of them. I'll see you back tomorrow, and we're going to continue this conversation. Who needs God? Who needs faith? And is this stuff we're doing and this stuff we're practicing, is this Christianity? Love you guys. Love you all so much. Father, bless them now in Jesus' name. Give them uh, ears to hear what your spirit says to the church. Let's make a difference in the world. Bye-bye, guys.